Well, welcome to the Stone Roadie Podcast. It's the one you don't want to miss. It stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. Let's not forget Kathy Godsey and all the old friends that come along. Lord, we'll be a talking skinner and leaving you with a song. Time to rise and shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stone Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. The Stone Roadie Show, podcast 243, wake and bake, the morning buzz action. All righty then, fellow slaves and earthlings, looky here, looky here. My name's Craig Reed, a.k.a. The Stone Roadie. And as always, this is my co-pilot and the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. But before I have Griff take it away today, I just want to give a shout-out to um, Kimberly Bennett. Kimberly, you're probably in a hospital, and you're probably not watching this. I, I, I'm, I'm not real clear on what what the situation is with you. I understand you're having some heart problems and uh, you're going to get it checked out and you're in the hospital, but wish you the best of luck in there, Kimberly. She's one of our uh, subscribers and uh, watchers of the Stone Roadie Show. And uh, in there behind me, you see uh, uh, a Trumpkin, a 510-pound <laughs> Trumpkin. It's a 510 pound pumpkin my my lifelong friend don mars turned into a trumpkin and he put it up in out in his yard for halloween as a halloween decoration and and then made it a a, a trump campaign thing and uh, people have been stopping by getting their picture taken with it and everything of course he's got some people that call him a, call him uh, all kind of names for supporting trump but uh, <laughs> but he's gonna i stopped over there after the election after i, I voted yesterday and uh, said he was going to take it down before all the because we didn't know what the election results were going to be and you know all the all the crazies are going to come out today i don't know we still don't know what what the outcome of this is going to be but uh yeah, all the nutcases are going to come out today, all the uh, demo rats. Anyway, but anyways, but uh, when I was there, he told me his, uh, his wife's cousin, um, Kelly Mills. Kelly Mills said he was a watcher of the Stone Roadie show, and, and uh, he was telling Don that uh, Don said, yeah, I've known Craig my whole life, you know, so... Uh, yeah, shout out to shout out to shout out to call it uh, <laughs> Kelly Mills, yeah, Debbie's Debbie's cousin. Uh, yeah, I hope to talk to you someday in person, there, buddy. But uh, uh, let me see there. That's that's about all I got to talk about here this uh, this morning. On uh, while we're gonna wait for some of the results for the final results of this election so uh what you got going there griff well craig's trying to be uh sneaky and, and make out like that we are in the morning time but we're really this is in the evening of the of the election day because <laughs> you know we don't know what's going to happen so we're uh you know the the polls are closing as we speak in a lot of places um and yeah, it's uh, like seven fifteen here, right, Craig? We're you know, yeah. on a, a Monday, seven thirty. Uh, I mean yeah. Tuesday, and uh, yeah, so <coughs> we're you know we're uh, but it's six o'clock in the morning when these people are watching. This. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're on the edge of our seat. <coughs> I mean, I'll probably wake up to take a leak at about maybe one or two o'clock, and. And I'll and I'll take a look and see what's going on, but I don't think anybody's really going to know until probably the end of the week. I don't know. Well, I'll, well, we might know. I'm. I'm we're usually up, you know, 
editing these things till it takes a few hours to edit it, so it'll be sometime in the morning when he. When well, I there's going to be some controversy, I'm sure. Yes, so, we, but by the time this getting gets aired, we'll probably know more about it. But that that's not that's not now. So yeah, <laughs> a few right. hours from now. So that's the only reason you're seeing us, and we aren't like in a bad mood or a good mood either one because we don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> so, uh, but uh yeah anyway so um craig you got anything you want to mention about donations or anything like that you or? know what i do thanks for reminding me um chris eldridge sent in another 50 bucks now his name is familiar because he he sends in a donation about every couple weeks. Yeah. And he, he sent in another 50 bucks. So he's sending $510 here on this. This go around so far. Yeah. Chris is, Chris is a real good guitar player. Matter of fact, he just got bought one of uh, Billy Fender's uh, guitars that Billy Fender built for him. Yeah. Billy does and a he good got job one of, on uh, He got one of Brandon's. Uh, Miller's uh, guitars, uh, one of those explorers. He got one of those off of Brandon Miller. He's a really good guitar player, but he runs a, a lawn service from what I understand now. He, he's a hardworking man cutting people's lawns, done a, doing a lawn service. Yeah, so. yeah thanks for the uh, donation there, uh, Chris. Appreciate yeah, it's, that. It's hard to make a living when you're a local musician out there. It don't matter how good you are. It's tough making a living out there as a local musician i got a lot of good friends that are local musicians but they sure can't live off the money they no, make, I know. Make, a, make playing in the moose lodge on saturday nights you know so yeah so, uh, that's the name of that ball game you know so speaking of which this is that's kind of coincidental to something that i saw on facebook and uh it's actually a post and it talks about who was at Woodstock and what they were paid. And I can read them off for you. It won't take but a minute. Um, right at the top of the list, Jimi Hendrix, $18,000 he was paid to perform at the uh, Woodstock. If this is true, uh, you know, this, this could be bullshit, but I think it's probably true. Blood, sweat, and tears, fifteen thousand. Joe Myers was, was with was Al Cooper with them with blood, sweat, and tears because I believe he was. I kinda, believe he, he was. Kinda, he formed blood, sweat, and tears, yeah. and that would be just about that right, right same time period. Yeah, yeah, I believe he was. Uh, Joan Baez, ten thousand. Credence Clearwater Revival, they got ten grand. The band, seven thousand five hundred. Janis Joplin, seven thousand five hundred. Jefferson Airplane, seventy five hundred. Um, Sly and the Family Stone got seven grand. Canned Heat, sixty five hundred dollars. The Who, sixty five hundred dollars. Richie Havens, six thousand. Arlo Guthrie, five thousand. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, five grand. Ravi Shanker, four thousand five hundred. Johnny Winter, three thousand seven hundred and fifty. Uh, Ten years after, thirty-two fifty. Country Joe and the Fish got a whopping twenty-five hundred bucks. Um, Grateful Dead, they only got twenty-five hundred bucks. Then um, the Incredible String Band, they got two thousand two hundred fifty. Mountain got two grand. Tim Harden two grand. And guess who got the least amount of everybody at one thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars? Uh, Craig and you should know because I they they were there. Santana. And, no. <laughs> well, they played there, and you didn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe they why they got left off this list. But Joe okay. Cocker. Oh yeah, one thousand three hundred seventy-five. Yeah, I wonder why. Why 
Santana, maybe they didn't. Um, well, do you know, it. you know, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Strawberry Alarm Clock was offered that gig and they turned it down because they didn't think it was going to be anything. I wondered what they offered them. Oh, that wow. would be interesting to ask Ed King. I'm sure he knows, but he's not with us anymore. Well, uh, I think there's still some Strawberry Alarm Clock guys alive. Yeah, um, shit, that was uh, 60 years ago. Who's going to remember that? Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Ed would have remembered it. That seems like that. a lot to make, though, back back in them days, 18 grand for uh, for Hendrix. That was... Uh, yeah, that was... Yeah, I that, know. That was a lot of money back then. But that was a big event, so... You know, that was when concerts really just started. I mean, big concerts. I mean, you know, there was things inside of school gyms where Elvis and and uh played stuff <laughs> yeah <clears throat> and then um um just looking at some this uh 38 special backstage pass 2005 tour uh we got looks like one two three four five of them and Craig says he's going to do his best to try to get Carlisi to sign them. And uh, they came from Kent Griffith. And something interesting I got in that pile of stuff that can't be real. <clears throat> um, Kent, if you're watching, and you probably are, man, what's up with this uh, this Leonard Skinner Greenville October 19th, 1977 ticket stub? I don't think that's real, man. Um it's a copy, I believe. It, it looks like a copy on the back, so I don't, I don't yeah. know. Seems well, like but it. but let me know, Kent. What's up with that? It's still cool. It's it's still really cool. Um. So yeah, those are some things we're looking uh, forward to uh, to uh, donating, and I mean uh, that he donated for well, that we'll put up for auction. Anything else? Or what's going on with the? The vest, any of that? Oh, that stuff vest. Up? Yeah, I don't remember the guy's name that uh, outbid uh, Sue's and Sue uh, M. Sue bid 125, and then somebody stepped up, and I kind of lost his information and bid uh, 150 on it. If I'd sign it, and then they give a doctor. Yeah, that doctor was stuff. Jeff. I believe that was Jeff. But that did uh, that. But I haven't heard from Jeff. I don't know if he's been watching the last couple of podcasts, but if uh, you happen to catch his podcast, Jeff, uh, you were the winner of that vest. And uh, if not, well, I'm just going to uh, let Sue have it. Uh, she already she already paid 125 I thought she was going to get it, but then I told her she was outbid, and, uh, and she said, I'll just donate the money to Gene, so. So that was all for nice over. So yeah, yeah we haven't was. heard anything from Jeff. I, I, I guess that's his name. So uh, yeah, if you still want the vest, Jeff, you're 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 the legitimate winner. But uh, we we've, we've been waiting. <laughs> yeah, email Craig. Uh, don't yeah, email, email me. me and tell me. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm know, not the guy that you tell email. Me, uh, you email what you want? Email Craig. Tell me what you want to do there. Griff said your name's Jeff. I. I can't remember. I got brain damage. I can't keep up. Yeah, he emailed me a couple times, but I tell you what, I get so many emails, and, and that's why I say you got to email Craig because I can't. I don't keep track of that stuff because if anything happens to Craig and you guys come after me, I'll say, <laughs> hey, man, I don't know shit. <laughs> I, don't, I know nothing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, and so you, you, uh, you mentioned, uh, Kimberly Bennett and uh yeah so we got um the comments and questions to go over and uh anything else that you need to bring up Craig to talk about that anything no uh -uh. no that's we got some, some pretty yeah. cool cool comments and questions here um so we'll just start off uh and yeah we hope that everybody went out and voted if you didn't go out and vote damn man you know, I mean, I know people think, well, I'm just one person. My vote doesn't count, but hell, you know, if everybody said that, then we'd damn sure lose. And, uh, 
I saw uh, on Facebook somebody posted that there's people coming in the Canadian border too. They caught them on uh, trail cams, and they're coming in through that Canadian border, not just the southern border. They're coming in the northern border too. Uh, oh, I'm sure there's a lot of yeah, places oh, yeah. you can get through through Canada that they're not watching, you know, yeah, on uh, water they, or whatever. I'm sure there's that's a lot of territory up there to try to watch. Yeah, and then there was another thing on Facebook. Did you see it? It was on Joe Rogan too. It was uh, this guy uh, rescued a little squirrel. And, um, he raised it, you know, from a little tiny squirrel and and then he trained it and the squirrel and him had uh, this really great relationship. The squirrel loved him to death and some Karen, uh, in California somewhere or something somewhere, uh, calls somebody up complaining about the guy having a squirrel and the government goes to his house, confiscates his squirrel and a raccoon that he had, and they killed the squirrel. And that's going viral because, you know, the squirrel's so cute. All you got to do is go on Facebook, and you can see it. I've been seeing that same post over and over. People are pissed off about, you know, the fact that the government can come in your house and take some wild pet that you got. Take you your know, pet, and, yeah. Take a yeah, pet and, and, and kill, kill it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And old uh, Joe Rogan. and Two uh, of them, a raccoon and a squirrel. Yeah. No, they're sick, man. It's... Yeah, so next thing, they'll be taking your dog, you know. So, yeah, let's jump into the, to the questions here. Um, let me see. Ronnie said, uh, uh, one person said, uh, let me see on what you, uh, what the grocery store for you. Oh, yeah. If you, uh, if you, if you go out to vote and you still haven't voted, he said, go to the grocery store first. That'll give you, a, that'll make you decide, you know, who to vote for if you go to the grocery store. Cause yeah, every time it depends on what grocery store you go to, but, um, we have down here at Publix and, I came out with two little bags of groceries and it was over a hundred bucks. Just, you know, stupid bullshit, you know, kind of healthy food. I mean, you, you know, the healthy stuff isn't cheap. You know, I, I wish there was a way that the people that voted for communism, when, when, if, if, and when Trump gets in there and wins, when gasoline comes down to under $2 a gallon, I wish there was a way that all these people that voted for for her would have to pay four dollars a gallon, which was what was what it's going to be. Instead of paying under two, they'd have to pay four, and then they wouldn't get a reduction on food, and then they wouldn't make any money on tips. They wouldn't make any money on overtime. They had they'd have to pay continue to pay three thousand dollars a month rent, and all this freaking crap these people are insane you know and uh, yeah and then just take that money and give it to the rest of us and take take their jobs and give it to somebody that's a, a he she or whatever they're freaking weird yeah you know it's come down to the to the fact that you know i don't think that as many people they say are voting for her you know it can't be that close it just can't be oh, it's, it's a they lie say, they say it's that, that this is the closest one in ohio <laughs> my god he 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 got more votes than anybody ever i mean he beat hillary was born to be president he beat her now he yeah. can't beat this whore oh my goodness i'll have to edit that out oh they ain't gonna get that they ain't gonna get that. Okay, we'll go. try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a truth. That we, he said that, but th that this is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> what? It's the truth. <laughs> ask Ask <laughs> Willie Brown's wife who if, what she thinks about her. Yeah, that's you know she's you know she's supposed to be about about for all. That's a legend. All about families. Ask Willie wife. Willie Brown's wife, what she, she thinks about Kamala's yeah. family ethics or morals. Right. That's alleged, but, you know, we'll let you 
Everybody. All legend, my ass. <laughs> Christ, everybody. It's like the Tampon Tim legend. All these yeah. freaking. Oh, God. Well, he uh, said something about J.D. Vance was gay, wearing eyeliner or something. I heard something <laughs> about that. And I'm like, what? You talking oh, about God. Tampon uh, Tim throwing out some some uh, some comments to J.D.? It's like, come on, man. You know, oh God! But uh, they're yeah. crazy. It's like <laughs> Oprah, Oprah telling these women, if you don't vote for her, that you'll never be able to vote in an election again. That's it's totally the opposite way. You vote I for know. her, and you'll never vote in an election again. Yeah, it's uh, it's good against evil, man. It's the good against the evil. Now, those people don't believe in. And she God. put her purse when she she put she she swore on the Bible and she put her purse in between her yeah. hand and the Bible. Yeah, there's a close up of it. Yeah, they she put her little pocketbook on top of the Bible and put her hand on top of the pocketbook because she doesn't want to touch the Bible while she swear she's sworn in because she knows. But she's she lying. prays twice a day. She's the big oh, she's what I said before. Well, who knows who she prays to? She could be praying to uh, uh, the snake, for all we know. Um, Steve Jones, Craig, can you remember how Traveling Man was written and when they began playing it, since it isn't on any studio albums? No, but I can imagine how he come up with the words. Traveling man, that's what I am. That's all I'll ever be. Moving around from town to town. <laughs> My thing be so free or something like that. I got you all these pretty me. women, Lord. Won't you understand? Uh, oh, or traveling man, traveling, yeah, man. traveling man. I don't know. I can't remember everything. All of them. Were you, were you around when they were, when they were writing it? I mean, I'm sure I was. Yeah. I got, I could sit. I was around with when they wrote all those, but you know, it was just, you know, well, here's the thing about that is at the time, you know, you didn't know that they were going to become these hits. You just thought, you know, okay, that sounds pretty cool. But you didn't realize that they would be played over and over. And I over didn't again, re you know? realize those songs would be freaking legendary. That right. fifty years later, people would be asking me to sing the words to "Traveling Man." You know, <laughs> somebody I was talking to somebody today, and they were, we we were just talking about you know they they only they lasted really three and three quarter years, and they it. Uh, they became legendary just in that. I mean, more than, yeah. like I've said before on eBay, their stuff, Skittered stuff sells more for more money than anybody on eBay. Uh, from my, um, you know, looking around what I can tell. Well, they I were inspired. Them. And Gene Odom says, you know, Ronnie, his whole goal was to get the hell out of Shantytown. That no, that's his. the truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, he, that was his inspiration. He needed a way to get out of Shantytown. That's it. Yeah. So, and he damn sure did. And then Steve Jones again. Skinner played with Yes at Hawthorne Park in Sierra, Illinois in 1976 with Peter Frampton and Gary Wright. Uh, the Hawthorne is a, is a horse track. So maybe you said that when I asked. Well, if, yeah, if I said with... that. I, 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 after I saw that, I do kind of remember. Well, Rick, Wright, Rick Waitman, Wakeman was not with them then. It was, uh, it was not all of the original. Yes, but I don't think I was at the show yet. That seems like that was a an event that was like. Uh, I don't think I, I don't remember. I don't. I didn't go. I didn't. I wasn't enthused to watch him. I don't think. I, I kind well, of after he said that, I kind of remember it. But well, we like being fact checked. 
because you know that's why yeah. we have yeah we we appreciate when people look this stuff up so uh, yeah i'm wrong sometimes i mean god yeah. i was wrong at least five times that's how many times i've been married yeah i mean <laughs> yeah well that's might be the problem with with being married and being wrong is if you don't admit it you won't be married long because <laughs> These women, man, if you don't get start, you know, I'm sorry, then you're an asshole. And see, there's an asshole tally. The good tally, you got the asshole category, and then you got the I did a good thing category. That I did a good thing category don't mean shit, because they don't remember too much about that. But that asshole category, they that's what they remember. Well, I, if I was still married... I wouldn't be doing this podcast because I was, I was more or less shamed for even talking about ever being with Leonard Skinner. When when I'd go places and I'd talk about being with Leonard Skinner, every time I'd get home, I'd get belittled. You used to be with Leonard Skinner, but you're not anymore. What are you doing now? You're not doing <laughs> nothing now. You know, quit. You can't live on your past forever. You know, yeah. what do you do now? You know, yeah. So there you go. If I was doing, if I was still married, I wouldn't be doing <laughs> this. So, well, you could do it, but I wouldn't you might be not, allowed to. But but you might lose your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> All and right. you guys that are married out there, don't listen to me and Craig. <coughs> you know, do what you have to do. Get in there and kiss that ass. Because you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to be, man, it, if if you're already like in your 50s and you're like thinking about getting divorced, I don't know, man, just go stick your head in the oven because it ain't worth it, you know, at that <laughs> age. Just, you know, do what you got to do, man. Do what you got to do. You know, go in there and kiss that ass. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Fuckna says, um, uh, seen Tommy Bolin play with Leonard Skinner. He was in deep purple right after Richie Blackmore. Yeah. You know, after they lost Richie Blackmore, I just wasn't interested anymore because, you know, I was a huge Richie Black, Ricky, Richie, Richie Blackmore fan. Uh, he, um, he's got that unique sound. <laughs> nobody, nobody sounds like that guy, man. And he, uh, but he's kind of a strange dude. You know, he does this, wears this like medieval attire, you know, like these weird hats and he's been doing that stuff forever. But how old do you think he is now, Craig? He's past 80. I think oh he's God, like, I don't know. Yeah. He's like 83 or 84. Maybe. I don't know. You fact checkers check that out. I could look it up, but yeah. Richie Blackmore, man, he's, He's getting up there, but I imagine he still plays. Uh, we mentioned uh, last week. We mentioned I don't know how we fun funkadelic. Uh, what was that? Funkadelic yeah, that's in something. here somewhere. Yeah, that was. Uh, and I and I was going to say that that was George Clinton, and yeah, I partied with George Clinton. Did you? <laughs> yeah, he was a hoot, man. He said, "Who'd got the cocaine?" <laughs> <laughs> he was the old black man. Yeah, who's got the cocaine? Well, he was a partier, yeah. Hey, well, one of what them are you from white Illinois. boys got the cocaine. Or no, one <laughs> of them I think was from Ohio, too. Um, Seems like I looked that up, and he was. Let me see if I got that in here. Yeah, uh, George Clinton, Parliament... Funkadelic. Parliament Funkadelic. Yeah, that was yeah. Clinton. Yeah, he was he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't smell very good either. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He had a funk. <laughs> Funkadelic. <laughs> That's why maybe they got the name, you know. <laughs> uh, had then, an uh, oh dear. <laughs> Chad says if Will Smith would have died it would have been all over the news not just Facebook well I don't watch the news because it's all lies I saw this thing and it gave the said these are the people that died in this this in 2024 and Will Smith and I and I clicked through the whole thing 
and Will Smith was like the last one. It must have been just all fake. I don't know why people do that. They get their jollies on putting up fake shit, man. It's like well, it's it's a clickbait. They call that clickbait. Yeah, it's uh, they get you to click on it. They get paid for clicks. So. Yeah, and they put it right at the very end, so you got to watch the whole thing. And yeah. Yeah, if one of, one of those Indian dudes called you up, and, and that's how he got hacked into your computer, remember? Because <laughs> he, he tried to say something, and then you were like, all right, you let him on your computer, and then the next thing, we weren't all, you were, had to get take your computer. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah that was, I was trying account. to clear up something with something, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I remember, remember they, they got was. into your account and you could only keep yeah, a certain yeah, amount yeah, of money I in called. there, yeah. And that was one of your excuses for not sending the shit off. Yeah, that was <laughs> one of them, yeah. I got a whole book of excuses. I'll I'll make up another one here real quick if you want me to in my book. I got a lot of them. No, Get I'm gonna send that out. stuff out. Now that now that I'm not all stressed out about what's going on about this election and you know, like well, you might before, be stressed out. If like Trump I said wins, before, if, if she wins, we're just going to have to close this thing down. So I'm going to have to send everybody's shit out to them before <laughs> we, you know. So don't don't get yeah. frustrated. Even though I'm going to close this down, if she wins, I'll still send out your shit. You know, so don't worry about it. I might do one every now and then, but we won't be able to talk about anything. Except right. If, unless it, 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 it can we talked about communist communist uh the takeover the, the well we'll just become woke if you can't beat yeah. them you join them yeah we'll have to pretend like we're woke we'll have to talk in code yeah, yeah. we'll have to and, erase you know, everything we've done hmm. though so far because we you know we've we've uh you know we've, we've crossed the line Oh god yeah they'll put us in prison for talking about her like we have oh yeah Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, we'll go. Yeah, we'll go to. And who was it that told me Gitmo doesn't have any power now? Oh, that was me. That that Cuba. You? But I heard that the whole island of Cuba didn't have any power, and that's where Gitmo was. Huh. Yeah. Well, Gitmo's its own island somewhere, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So, hopefully, though, uh, Mister T will win. Even if he wins, it's going to be they're oh, going to be good. trying to throw him in jail. They're going to be UFOs bombing us. There's going to be more storms. Well, the, even the, the the mentally ill, there are so many. I can't believe the amount of people that are mentally ill. And I, I the one people I've known my whole life turned out to be mentally ill. And the, man, it's <laughs> opened my eyes to all the mentally ill yeah. bitches that are out there. Man, they're running around. And uh, oh yeah, if Mr. T wins, they're they're gonna they're gonna yeah they'll be suicide they'll be they'll be committing suicide they'll be yeah they'll be uh, they're crazy they're all indoctrinated and brainwashed they're all believing all this crap that these these people have been lying all that they, they do is lie my God if you can't people can't look at these people and see all the lies that they tell you. And well, y'all are addicted to all this food. That's the reason you're fat. You're eating this garbage that they, it's all chemically <laughs> treated. They've got you addicted to all these chemicals. Like they got everybody addicted to cigarettes. They put all this shit in this food and they've got you all addicted to this horse shit. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, if you guys didn't hear this on the last podcast, because my god because it's it is a reminder <laughs> <laughs> and and here we go <laughs> anymore it really, it really sucks bad in my opinion you fat peppers <laughs> <laughs> Hey, if you're uh, my friend and you're doing something that's foolish, yeah, you know, that's the way I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to go, hey, 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 stupid. Hey, 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 stupid. You're freaking stupid. So well, I Craig, to I'll have to say, in stupid. your defense, in your defense, I'll have to say, I don't think anybody's 
killed themselves over you fat shaming them. <laughs> but I think there's been quite a few people that have lost weight. <laughs> there have been a lot of people. Yeah, we know. Weight. We know. Yeah, we've had them on the show. And what I say is true. You take uh, you take away the the fake shit that women are wearing and put men's clothes on them, and they're they're gonna look like a little short fat man. Most of them. Most women, you take away their hair and their makeup and their nails and their fake eyelashes and put them in men's clothes and put them out there in the street. You can't tell if it's not a little fat man. And that's the truth. Well, I know for myself that, you know, if I were dating, I would, I would say, which I'm not because there's not any, any women out there that aren't Democrats. They're all, they all hate Trump. I mean, there are some, but all the ones that are out there, they're already taken. But, you know, if there was a fat girl and, and it, and I was like on the, you know, uh, I was on, uh, I was on the edge of which way I was going to go with her. If she put on a little tiny anklet bracelet, I'd go out with her then. <laughs> there aren't many women out there that don't have to wear makeup and stuff. There's not <laughs> many that don't, that don't. I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of women. They look better to me without the makeup. Oh my, uh, yeah. My opinion. Yeah. But. A little bit's all right, you know, when you no, start really... No, a little bit's all right. And yeah. I don't even mind phony eyelashes on a woman that's already attractive. But they look ridiculous. Those big old oversized eyelashes on a, on a hippopotamus looks ridiculous. I'm sorry. Elsie <laughs> the why cow. Even bother? Kinda, remember Elsie the cow? That's what it kind of reminds. Why me of. even bother? My <laughs> God. Okay. All right. Let's jump back in here in these questions. Uh, let me see. Brad uh, says uh, the uh, owner of the Hobby Lobby, which uh, I was talking about. That's where I get all my stuff, and I think I said they were a liberal place, which. I don't know why I said that. It seemed like I was in there and they were selling some liberal bullshit in there. And I was like, oh, they got to be liberal if they're selling that. But this guy here says it's a Christian conservative owner and that um, their, their, their company policies reflect that, which good because I like, I like the Hobby Lobby. That's where, I get a lot of my paint supplies, but they don't have the big tubes of oil paint. They have these little tiny tubes and, uh, shoot, man, I'd go through one of those little tiny tubes in one painting, you know, it's just, uh, kind of ridiculous that they don't sell the, the big tubes of, of oil, but I, I love the hobby lobby. Yeah. And then hearing that they're, um, a conservative company, uh, kind of like, um, uh home that depot chicken? that guy died the owner of home depot he donated i guess he donated five billion dollars to the trump campaign oh he did that's what somebody that's yeah what i know I trump said radio, he was friends with from that home guy depot. he said he as a matter of fact he used that guy because when he said you know, he was Biden, 95 years old or something. Like yeah. That. He said, Biden, you know, he says Biden's old and he's losing it, but he goes, I know a lot of people that are old and sharp as attack. Like the guy that owns home Depot. He said he's sharp as attack and he's in his late nineties or mid nineties. Uh, so Trump, yeah, he knows that guy. Um, <coughs> but, um, What's the name of that chicken place that, uh, is like Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A. Yeah. That, that, uh, maybe, uh, this place is kind of like, because they're not open on Sunday. The hobby lobby is not open on Sunday. Um, yeah, great store. Then, uh, David Hester says he had a friend that did. <coughs> he, he had a friend that did quaaludes every day and wrecked his car all the time. No wonder that happened to Gary and Allen. So they call you Prince Charming. Can't speak a word when you're full of ludes. You know, I'll have to say, I did a quaalude at my buddy's house. Um, it was probably 
76 and I was driving home in my truck and I actually, I, I fell asleep at the wheel and then I heard like a, like a loud noise. And I was like, what the hell was that? You know? And it, and one about the time and I saw this telephone pole just in time, took my side mirror off of my door and I was <laughs> wide awake after that, man. I mean, those Quaaludes, they do, they'll make you fall asleep at the red light. I had a, I had a whole bottle. I mean, a, a I think it's maybe 500 uh, in, we're in a bottle. I still got the bottle. No I, way. Yeah, I had a whole bottle, 500. Before I got with Skinner, I had a whole bottle of those. I think there was 500 of them. I still got the bottle. I'll show you the bottle next on the next podcast. I'll show you the bottle they came in. I still got the bottle. <laughs> That's That'd be a great item to see. 500, yeah. It was, it's a Quaalude bottle. Yeah, it was full of Quaaludes. I, I, Freaking sure Quaalude was. bottle with a stone roadie uh, letter of authenticity? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was five. I think there's 500 of them in there. Yeah, still got the bottle. <laughs> and it, and you can still read it, Methaquate. No, 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 no. It doesn't say anything on it. Oh, it, it doesn't. It, it, it may have at one time, but it's just a plastic bottle now. I, I probably if it said something on it, I probably took it off. Oh, okay. It's just a plastic bottle now. Yeah, if it still had Quaalude on it, then yeah, say. yeah, it don't have it. Did, yeah, it don't have no writing on it. Nothing. It's just a plastic bottle. Oh, okay. Yeah. But anyway, what were you saying? That's all. I just had to just saying I had still have the a bottle. You know, talking about Quaaludes, and I just happened to think in my drawer in there by beside my bed, I got the. Just bottle. Just think if you had one of those right now, to the you know, like if you found some in your. In, in in Ronnie's tackle box. <laughs> you, <laughs> well, you, uh, you remember uh, Wolves of Wall Street? Remember when them guys oh, yeah. ate, ate those quaaludes? And they, they said, "Well, they're so old, we better eat another one." <laughs> and then they ate a whole bunch of them, and then they and they were tore up all yeah. at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those things, man. I, you had to work yourself up to them. You couldn't just start like you oh, had to take man, a well, half. Them, and then you, you know, and then once you're used to taking a half, then you could take a whole one. But I knew guys that could take three. Oh man. I'd, I'd go to this bar and I'd <clears throat> eat a Quaalude and drink a bottle of that La Lambrusco. <laughs> that oh, wine, that's a remember downer. Lambrusco? Oh yeah. You eat a Quaalude and drink a bottle of Lambrusco. Boy, you got a good buzz. That's a in the couch right there. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, yeah, your ears are ringing, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great buzz. Oh was, man, yeah, was, yeah. It wasn't anything wrong with it. It's not like no. you know, if you took a Percocet or something, you know, I get nauseated off of those Percocets. But a Quaalude, it's just such a mellow. I could see why they got rid of them, man. I mean, those things. I don't know why they uh, they outlawed them though. But you know, they were great. What I mean, were they know their nor their rate their original purpose was for psychi psychosis or something like that? Uh or? well I know they used them for uh to they used the black beauties during the day for diet <laughs> for dieting and then they gave you a quaalude to go to sleep at night. So you had the the black beauties because my father they were, but the quaaludes for, for housewives for depression or like some I, kind of, I don't know, but issue. like, a, my, like my, my father would go to Tampa to see everybody went to see the fat doctor and he knew that, that, I mean, you had to be overweight to come see him, but only like 20 pounds. Cause he knew you were coming to get the quaaludes and the black beauties, but he couldn't like give them to you if you were skinny. You know, so he would, he, you come over there and he'd go, oh yeah, I'm going to put you on this diet here. And he would write, he would write out black beauties and quaaludes and you go pick them up. And then, and then, then my father got his new uh, bottle of quaaludes. Uh, then all of his buddies were coming over all of a sudden, you know, it's like, Hey, well, what's going on? You know? And then everybody was laying around. And, <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> but, yeah, those things, uh, those things were, <laughs> were crazy. Never heard <clears throat> anybody ODing on them though. I mean, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, I um, still had I still had a stash of Black Beauties 
when I took off with Skinner, when I went down to Atlanta, met up with them in Atlanta, and went down to the Hell House, and then me and Joe Barnes uh, drove out to the record plant in L.A. I had Black Beauties, and I drove most of the way. I was on Black That's why we got there so fast. I was eating Black Beauties and drove. Oh, yeah, through. and they worked, too. They'd keep you awake. Oh, yeah, man. I drove the whole way out there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was flying. Yeah, eating black beauties, yeah. And then, <laughs> like I said, the Quaaludes, they brought you down because during the day you could eat those, and then at night when it came time to go to sleep. And that was that was Elvis Presley's, <coughs> one of his uh, medications was the black beauties and the Quaaludes. And yeah, then he yeah. had a bottle of liquid cocaine, and he would stick a Q-tip in it and rub it in his nose. He like a... <laughs> Yeah, a whole yeah, I saw a whole special on on the drugs that Elvis took. Yeah, he was yeah, he was a big drug. <clears throat> yeah, okay, let's move right along here. Um, okay, that was David Hester. Yeah, good good question there, David Hester. Uh, or good comment. Um, Mike D says uh, he saw Allen's. Um, involvement with the Miami project. Was there ever any hope that Alan could have possibly walked again? Yes, there was. Yeah, there, there, there was the, the doctor said that Alan was a prime candidate, uh, to, to, to recovery, but Alan wouldn't do it. He was so freaking, uh, addicted to doing drugs. He wouldn't go down there, and, and and he wouldn't listen to them them doctors. He just wouldn't do it. He wouldn't he wouldn't do what they were telling him to do. He just wouldn't do it. He he checked himself out of those freaking hospitals. I got on him about it. I said, "Damn it, Alan! Them doctors said they could cure you. Why don't you go do it?" He couldn't do it. He couldn't. You know, he he you know couldn't what? go without doing drugs. You know what Gene told me? Gene said one time they had him up out of his chair. And I don't know if Gene wants me to tell this or not, but I think he'll be all right with it. At one time they had him up out of his chair and they kind of leaned him against the wall and they let go of him and he stood against the wall for a minute. And, and then Gene was like, man, what the hell you can, he goes, you, you can get better. And he said the reason he didn't want to get better was because if he got better, he would go to jail. That's what Gene told me. Because oh, he, wow. he, because the judge said, if you ever become where you can walk again, you're going to jail for what happened to that girl. Um, but that's the well, Gene Odom story. I think he would have done If I was in that position, I'd do it secretly. I would, you know, yeah. wouldn't let nobody see me, but I would do it. He couldn't do it. He, he would do it in front of me. He would, you know, he would, he couldn't right. do nothing. But I'm sure old Ken I'd Griffith. Say, Damn it, Alan, do something. He says, I can't, Craig. He did? You know, I'd yeah. say, damn it, do it. And he goes, I can't, Craig. You know? Right. So, I so mean, you, I got on him about it, you know? I'm, he just you know, gave up is what he did. He just gave up. It's just, you know, that's just the way I am. If I'm trying to fix somebody, I'm, I'm not, come on, baby. <laughs> God damn it. Stupid kid. Wake up. Yeah. You know, I mean, God, that's, I, be it. I was in them. I was in them positions, man. You know, that's the only thing that worked on me. You know, psychology don't work. You got to freaking hit somebody over the head by a with a two by four and wake them up and then you yeah. can talk to him. Well, he was such a drug addict, man, that he couldn't, you know, he just, he, and he'd been through so much psychologically. He wasn't in a place to try to get better. I don't think. No, he wasn't. No, he, but what a great damn guitar player he was. Uh, yeah. The guy says here, Parliament Funkadelic is George Clinton, and we talked about that. 
Kimmy says, my husband is skinny, Griff. I could say more. <laughs> I could say more, but I'm not, I'm going to be nice. I, I, that sounds like you, a little penis comment right there to me. It's a, <laughs> is that what you're talking about, Kimmy? Because I don't think he'd appreciate that. I don't think he would appreciate it. But he's skinny, huh? Oh, okay. That's nice to know. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph Yemma would love to see some slow poke and running easy videos of Joe Crimp. Well, you know what? I don't think. There's any out there that really, uh, you know, Joe's got some, uh, some film somewhere, I think, or he had it in his sister's attic and it got thrown away or something. But, uh, I don't think he's got any video of slow poke and, uh, running easy. There's probably some out there. Somebody's got somewhere, but, um, I've never seen any, I've heard the music, Joe you would think disc. somebody's got something. I mean, God. You would think. Yeah, would I think would like to see it myself. Something. But uh, I'll have to ask Joe and see if he's got any uh, video at all or if he knows of any video or anything. I need to give that guy a call. I hadn't talked to him in a while. So, yeah, so, yeah like I'll to, check on that. I'd like, yeah, some of the, if they had any recordings, man, they could re, re, uh, whatever you want to call it, reproduce them and sell them things like freaking uh, Crawdaddy did. Yeah. They could, a, they could put a record together. They had some good stuff. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I They ought to do it awesome. if anybody's got anything. I don't know if they got anything, though. Well, Joe gave me a, a slow poke disc, and it had some great music on it. It sounded a lot like... You know, people say, if they heard it, they say, that sounds like Skinner. Well, Skinner kind of took a little bit of their style from what I uh, understand that, you know, they they kind of felt they were better than Skinner. Well, actually. they all, you know, all those bands were so close. I mean, you know, yeah. Kevin Elson had a band called Sweet Rooster or something like that, and that Jeff Carlisi was involved with. And then, uh, you know, they all had little, th these little bands, you know, Slowpoke and, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, all of them. Yeah. And then Ronnie, uh, they all and... grew up together. So they all kind of probably fed off each other. It was a little close, small family of people, you know, kind of. And they were at the right Skinner was at the right place at the right time, you know, uh, up there in I mean, Georgia. they rehearsed in the same freaking joint. They the Slowpoke and uh Skinner, that was they all both rehearsed in the Hell House. That's where they rehearsed. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, Skinner was out of town, Slowpoke was there. And uh, and I think had Leonard Skinner uh, not been or in the plane easy, crash, we... you would be hearing uh, running easy and slow poke, or, or well, it'd be running easy or slow poke is what I guess the the band that they were they were pushing. But they would, yeah, they would have been a household name, I believe. Uh, yeah, if Ronnie would still be alive, I'm sure he would have worked with those yeah. some of them guys, you know, because he. Oh, I believe so. I believe he would have. Yeah. They were all close. They were all Cause, good friends. Because you know? he had him in Altamont, and he was, you know, he was saying, "Hey, you know," and he introduced them and everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you, he'd have helped them out. Were you in Altamont? Did you go to Altamont, Craig? What year? That was the at Lakeland when they they played at Lakeland and they loaded up in the limo and they went to that signing in Altamont at the Altamont Mall. Well, if it was after, if it was after. It, no, it was, it was after right before 70... the, it was right before the crash. In oh Lakeland. yeah, I was there. I you was... were there. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, at the, in the limo. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, well, they were all pissed off as because we put freaking stickers all over the limo and shit. Oh really? Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, they we had the limo and stuff. Yeah. They were, they were kind of irritated because we put stickers on the Skinner. Yeah, you guys jumped on uh, on I four and jumped on Lake in Lakeland. You jumped on I four and drove all the way down to uh, Altamont there and 
and they had all those tents set up and and it had a big stack of the albums they were signing and everything. Yeah, you had to be there, Craig. Yeah. Well, Crimp was there. Joe Crimp was there because he he uh, did the sound check with Artemis Drums. Yeah. At the, uh, yeah, at the uh, Civic Center. So, yeah, he told <coughs> all about it. And that's where Bobby Sanders got the last Ronnie Van Zandt autograph is uh, at the Altamont Mall. Oh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. <clears throat> um, yeah, Phil Collins referring to the Peter Gabriel song Shock the Monkey. Yeah, I was thinking that was uh Phil Collins that did that song, but it was Peter Gabriel. I guess maybe Phil Collins was the drummer in that or something, maybe, but he had something to do with it. I that, don't remember. I just remember monkey. said Leah or Allen told him uh, that Phil Collins told him to shock the monkey. He must have <laughs> he must have saw him and said that guy's jacked up man you need to shock the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> he don't look too good. Phil Collins is pretty bad shape right now. Yeah, man. yeah. He's got a cane. He's he can't gotten, walk. He's gotten old. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he had some spinal issues, but I think he lives down in Miami. Uh, see here, um, that's not anything that we want to talk about. And, uh, oh, a James Keneally, and this is the last comment. Have you ever seen Ted Nugent on the Conan O'Brien show talking about fat people and the government poisoning you in the food? He said he was way ahead of his time. Yeah, I, I saw that. That uh, when Ted was on Conan O'Brien, he and he was, and it reminded me of you, man. I was like, that's Craig right there. Yeah, oh, you look man. it up, man. Look it up, uh, Ted Nugent on Conan O'Brien, and and it, and it's and it's Craig Reed right there. He's talking. He was. He did one the other day, man. He was. He's, he was calling everybody slaves like I do. <laughs> All you slaves. Oh, yeah. to the, slaves to society. All you, you know, brainwashed sheep. And he know? said, I yeah. think on the Conan O'Brien show, he said, All you idea. fat, fat people. <laughs> he, he said, he yeah. said, Chad said, the only fast food I've ever, yeah. ever eaten is an elk. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was just getting ready to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any other time, yeah. he said, the only fast food I eat is a pheasant. He says, he says, yeah, fat people. He said, yeah, they're cute. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's yeah, funny. He's, he, <laughs> the truth. And then he, somebody was saying uh, to him, "So, are you saying that um, that these people that are that are liberals are crazy?" And he goes, "Yeah, that's what I'm saying." <laughs> because he goes, he goes, "I speak their language. You know what their language is?" <laughs> 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 Yeah, so that's it on the comments there, and uh, I hope you guys are, uh, right now, you know whether or not you're a communist or you're still free, and the <laughs> orange man is your leader or the uh, the hoe. Oh, God. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, whatever. It kind whatever of happens, good. the next six months are going to be hell. I mean, yeah, it don't matter. That's what, yeah. that's what the prediction is, I don't know. Whatever happened, the six next six months are gonna be hell. Right now, but I'm looking are... forward to gas being under two dollars and yeah, mm -hmm. no tax on Social Security. Uh, you know, no tax yeah. on tips. I mean, no tax on tips and stuff. None of that affects me. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, whatever. But yeah, I don't pay rent or nothing, so none of that affects me. But <laughs> groceries, you know, be nice, but I I don't really eat that much, so you know, my grocery bill is minimal, you know, compared to what I th see from other people. Mine's people say you can't eat good food and without spending a lot of money. Freaking bullshit, man! You don't try. That's why. 
So, uh, anyways, well, you you that that food that poison food that makes you eat more. It makes you feel like you need to eat more. So you're going to spend more at the grocery store if if you eat it. So, but if you eat the healthy stuff, you won't eat as much. Yeah, I eat, I eat money. healthy stuff, but I don't eat that much of it. You know? Yeah, because it doesn't make you you don't you get filled up after a while. Not I that I'm an expert the, on it. But. I went down to the peanut shop today and got me some some uh, black uh, chocolate cup, dark, dark chocolate walnuts and almonds and cherries. Yeah, you, better check, you better check your sheets to see if there's some dried up worms <laughs> in your in your bed, man. Oh, I got some. I got some real raw ginger too. I went down there and got some dry ginger, but I got some raw ginger today too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you probably don't have any parasites. I don't know. I might. I don't know. I, you know, I got dogs, so they say if you got animals, you got parasites. But I eat a lot of walnuts. Supposedly, those are supposed to clean you out and garlic and. Yeah, I've got. I'm working on my second cloves. bag of those walnuts. Cloves are cloves and uh, garlic and walnuts are supposed to be the natural things. To, Clean I it. got my flashlight out the other night, but I couldn't get my head down there to see, so I didn't have a mirror. <laughs> I don't know. There's a there's a lot of stuff coming out about worms, you know. Yeah, but I was talking to Brian about you know that I you know, that ivermectin stuff, and he was going, man, yeah, they they gave that to dogs for years for for worms. He said, but you can't. You got to give it to them in real small doses, because if you kill too many at once, it clogs them up. They, you know, you got to yeah. get do it real, real slow. If you give it too much, they kill too many worms and it kills them. But you got to remember, though, a dog drinks out of a mud puddle, and you know he's always licking oh, his butt. Yeah. And... My dogs don't go outside, but uh, they go out in the morning and at night. But there's, yeah, they don't drink. I don't know. There's not much stuff they can get into out in my bed. Yeah, your your dog's probably cleaner than old Timmy was. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, my dogs, they can't get more than... Yeah, I, I, I keep them t tethered to the porch. They can't go with about 20 feet past the porch, so they can't get into much. <laughs> I remember I was I was dating this girl, and she had a um, a golden retriever. And, and I saw her dog was eating its own shit. And I told her, I said, you know, uh, uh, Tessa, Tessa was the dog's name. It was a really good dog too, you know, and, and the dog would get mad and eat a, a turd. If we were leaving the house, like the dog would <laughs> like, get back at her. And so I kept telling her, I said, you know, when we leave that dog's eating, a dog turd out of the yard because I think he's mad at you. And she goes, my dog does not eat shit. And I said, I'm <laughs> telling you, your dog is eating shit. And so we got in the car one day and we were backing out and the dog was running around in the fence and I saw him and I, and I was watching her and she was watching the dog and the dog reached down and, and picked a turd up and threw it back. <laughs> and I looked at her and I go, see, <laughs> <laughs> oh she got it she was gonna go beat the dog and i wouldn't let her i wouldn't let her beat the dog <laughs> oh, yeah, God. i wouldn't let her beat the dog all right craig let's wrap it up man we got to go see who's winning the election all right well <laughs> i'm just looking at the thing here and it says Kamala's winning by 50 points yeah. Oh, Seriously. really? Oh, God, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's hilarious. Oh, man. Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to go stick my head in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, here it says Arkansas Trump's a winner. Missouri Trump's a winner. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't know, man. They'll I find out all go. this tomorrow. I won't oh, sleep. Uh, South if Carolina I... Trump's a winner. Uh, yeah, where is it? District of Columbia, Trump's a winner. No, uh, Kamala's a winner in District of Columbia. That's New York. Uh, 
Well, Georgia's the big one in Pennsylvania. You know, if he gets those. But uh, so far, Trump's got 105 electoral votes, and she's got 27. I, I don't know. I don't believe none of this. Shit. Yeah. All yeah, right. Well, on the 2020 election, we went to bed, and Trump was hundreds of thousands of votes ahead of Biden, and then we woke up, and Trump lost. You know. Yeah. They found they found all them votes. Oh, a couple days later, or whatever. I don't know. We all know it's been stolen, but. You know, yeah, allegedly. Yeah, and then all those people were put in jail for protesting the stolen election. It's yeah. what they want to do to everybody. <laughs> all um, right, happy trails. Until we meet again, see you late alligator at the wild crocodile. We'll call that a wrap. Cut. Happy trails. Happy trails to you, keep token until then.